Hey again, marketing research students and SPSS users. Uh, we're going to continue our exercises of recoding variables uh, using SPSS. Again, we're using the Spring 2014 Craft Beer 200 Random Subset Dataset. In this exercise, we're going to take the average of a series of variables and turn them into one variable. This is a common behavior that we often do in marketing research. We often have a situation where we have several similar questions that we asked on a questionnaire, and we'd like to take the uh, respondent's answers to those various questions and merge them into a single indicator. So for example, let's go to our variable view and let's take a look at variables 15 to 20. These are our subjective knowledge questions about craft beer. They all deal with this person's belief about how much they know related to craft beer, but they're not all created exactly equal. Well, for example, the first one is pretty straightforward. I know quite a bit about craft beer measured on a liquor scale. I know how to judge the quality of craft beer. Okay, similar. I know enough that I can help recommend craft beer to other people. Okay, so they're talking to other individuals now. Among a circle of friends, they'd be considered more knowledgeable. So this question is interesting because their subjective knowledge is now being measured against their peers, no longer independent of anybody else, such as the first question. This question, I really don't understand much about craft beer's reverse. And I know the differences between craft beer and non-craft beer. So when we look at these six questions, let's focus in on the last one. I know the differences between craft beer and non-craft beer. I know quite a bit about craft beer, and I know how to judge the quality of a craft beer. What's uniquely true about all three of these is that they all deal with a person's individual, regardless of context, um, and willing to communicate with others, their, their uh, idea of how well uh, they know about, uh, much they know about craft beer. Actually, let's also keep in mind this reverse code question here. I really don't understand much about craft beer. We'll also take advantage of this. We'll use these four questions to create a single indicator called something like subjective knowledge uh, personal craft beer. So how we merge these two, all these variables together is we simply go to transform. We go to compute variable. I have an equation here. I'm going to re hit reset here to clean it all out. So when we use compute variable, we always have to give our new variable a unique name. So we'll call it um, uh, sub sub uh, knowledge, so subjective knowledge underscore uh, personal um, craft beer. And you can give it any name that you want. So in this instance, <clears throat> we're going to use four variables, those four subjective knowledge variables, including the reverse coded one, to create a single average value. Now, earlier we learned what we can't do here is we can't simply take subjective knowledge overall, add subjective knowledge quality, add uh, subjective knowledge of distinguishing the differences, and then we have to do a reverse coding here, which we learned earlier we can't add. So if we add plus and then parentheses, six minus, we don't need the parentheses, but it's useful to keep that in mind. So six, so remember we took the min value plus the maximum value. So one plus five is six minus the reverse code. So this will reorganize this question so that now rever um, people who do believe they know about a lot about craft beer would be rated high on this score. It flips it around, so corrects, corrects the direction for purposes of our equation. And of course, if we wanted to take the average, we'd put this whole thing in parentheses, and we'd simply divide by the number of observations, one, two, three, and four. So we divide by four. However, we know that we can't run this in, because it won't work. And why is that? Well, what'll happen here is for any situation where any one or more of these variables were not re, uh, responded to by the participant, SPSS will not know what to do. It'll return, it, it will not allow us to compute this particular function for a, uh, this expression for a particular individual resulting in missing data. And we don't want that. If someone answered three of these four questions, we'd like it to still return the correct average value for those three questions instead of those four. So how do we fix that? Well, we take advantage of our SPSS function. So we're going to clear, I'll go ahead and just clear this out. We'll start from the beginning again. So we go to our function groups. And you'd think to yourself, well, there might be one called average. So I'm down here in the functions looking under A, typed in A. And oh, darn it, there's no average. OK, well, another word for average is mean. So I'll hit M. We'll search for a mean. Ah, there we go. Certain, sure enough, we have a mean function. So this mean function looks as follows. It has parentheses and has question marks. So it says, all right, add in the variables in the list that you, you want to have the average taken of. Let's read what it does here. 
It returns the arithmetic mean of its arguments that have valid non-missing values. Excellent. So it'll skip over any of the missing data. So if someone answered three questions of the four, it'll correctly divide it by three. So let's go ahead and add in our four questions here. Subjective knowledge overall. I deleted the question mark, kept the comma. Now for the other question mark, subjective knowledge quality. Then I have to add an additional question mark. And we'll type in subjective knowledge difference. And then comma. And now again, we can actually put and embed a little function right into this list. So I will do six minus subjective knowledge don't know reverse. So this is the, this will first do the reverse coding for us. And then it'll also incorporate this into the mean calculation. All right, if we set this all up, we should be able to go ahead and hit OK and run. Let's see our data view. And sure enough, we have a nice series of values. And why is this useful to a marketer? Well, again, it's a simplification. We had four different questions that we're all trying to tap into a very similar thing. And now having to deal with all four of those questions simultaneously, uh, we lose a little bit of the unique precision each one of those dealt with. But now we have a single collective sort of subjective knowledge measure. And this is quite useful um, for marketers to, to have the flexibility of only dealing with a single question. So let's, for example, if we go to analyze descriptives, run a simple frequency on our new variable, subjective knowledge. So here's our frequencies. We should see a range from one to five, right? The, the, all those other previous uh, Likert scale questions from one to five. So we should in fact see a one to five scale for our average. And sure enough, that's correct. Very good. We only have nine uh, missing values. And it appears, if we look at a nice frequency table here, it seems that people, and at least in this subset, generally consider themselves quite knowledgeable about craft beer here. We have a lot of people scoring around four to five and we have very few people scoring very low on this scale. Okay, so like many things when it comes to marketing research, people do, inf do think they know an awful lot about a particular topic. That's very common, not too surprised to see this data. Okay, so here we learned how to create a new aver an average indicator, uh, an a, a single variable that is the average of a series of other values for simplification of later analysis.